Welcome back outside for part two of Inside the Academy. Loads more coming up in the next 15 minutes or so, including the dance-off and the under eight signing session. But our next port of call is the Chelsea Reserves. And their latest outing was on Tuesday night away to Bolton. Tonight's 11 is not far off the Youth Cup team that's done so well of late. The exception, Sam Walker in goal. Ryan Bertrand left back, Cabby Jallo in midfield and the skipper Fabio Barini. 12 goals in seven reserve games. Kekun with the ball forward. Connolly with a terrible back pass, a great chance for Barini. Well denied. Not landed in the Bolton goal. Almost a gift for Chelsea there. It's Samuel that is who should clear. Towards corner. Decent header off the bar. That looked like it might have been a push by Bertrand. It was. Penalty. Bolton have a penalty for that shove. It's Eves and it's saved by Sam Walker. And Chelsea escape. Clifford. Chipped in but not cleared very well. Malkovich waits, the help comes from Bertrand, across and in by Todd Kane. The youth team's top scorer, right back tonight, has a goal teed up by the left back, his first at reserve level and Chelsea lead. Kane. Nice flip from Clifford, this is Barini, not far away. And the man who can't really miss at the moment. Kalash. Gifted to Barini there. Tries his luck. Oh, that is brilliant. In a season of superb goals. Fabio Barini has another. 2 0 Chelsea. Look at that. And welcome back, Marko Mitrovic, who hasn't played since the Youth Cup final last May. This is Eves. He missed the penalty earlier. Decent shot. Oh, that's more like it from him. Couldn't score from 12 yards. That was a beauty from 20. I didn't think we did particularly well in the first half. We, we played 4-4-2, which the first team have been doing. And um, we didn't get control of the game. So we, we changed to 4-3-3, and that looked better. We got a bit more possession in the middle of the pitch with our three against their two. And I thought we looked relatively comfortable in the second half in the end. And um, obviously got the second goal, and uh, you know it just goes to, to show even at two 0 you know right on the whistle almost it, it, that deflected goal right at the end, and then you're hanging on a little bit uh, right at the death. So we, we might have seen the game out a little bit better than we did, but overall I have to say that you know I'm pleased with the lads. They've uh, been on a good little run now, and um, you know tonight certainly second half was a good performance. Talk us through your first reserve team goal. Well, oh, it wasn't hardly a goal, was it? <laughs> I'll keep it. <laughs> well, um, Ryan was like had the ball, and uh, Milan uh, backheeled it, and I thought just ran into the box, and Ryan crossed it, and I was there, just tapped in. Nine goals this season. Yeah, in the league, yeah, it's good. I thought better than last season. What's 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 the mood like? What's the spirit like at this level at the moment? Um, we're, we're all very happy. You know, We've got a good little run of games going. Um, another good win tonight. Dif disappointed not to keep a clean sheet, but you know, it was deflected goal. Not really much we could do about it. Switched off last five minutes, but generally we're all pretty happy. Training hard. We've got a good run of games coming up, so yeah, we're looking forward to it. And finally, Marko Mitrovic, who hasn't played since the Youth Cup final. No, nine months, I think. And um, you know, he's worked tirelessly. He's, he's a great professional. And uh, you know, in first, away last, he's really worked as hard as anybody could have worked in his rehab. And um, you know, when when you do manage to get on the pitch, it's a, a great reward for him. He was going to play 45 for the youth team on, on Saturday, which he, he can do. He's el eligible for the youth team as an overage player. But um, he didn't finish training on Thursday, so he felt it was a risk. So he's only had a taste tonight. I don't know, maybe a quarter of an hour. But um, you know, he'll feel better from having been on the pitch again and uh, hopefully in the next game we'll get a chance to increase his game time. And finally, we, we, we've talked a lot this season about the quality of reserve team football and how the new structure 
maybe still hasn't given enough hours on the pitch but has really improved the quality of, of competition uh, and fabulous pitch tonight yeah, by the look of it and, and, facilities. and fantastic facilities yeah couldn't agree more well, every game we've played has been a good game bar none uh, my only criticism we haven't had enough now there are, there are a lot of reasons for that some of which maybe we can even control um, but every game we've played has been a good game and um, you know we're here tonight on a Tuesday night there's a good little crowd in the pitch is beautiful we're playing against players we don't know they're playing against players they don't know um, I think it's been good all, all the games have been good Another win for Steve Holland and the second string. That's seven in the league this season out of only 13 games played. Very impressive indeed. Now, to a much younger age group. Every year, a batch of young Chelsea hopefuls put pen to paper for the first time. It's a big day for them and their families. The recent promotion of youth team players into our first team setup has only emphasised the importance of development at the club. Nowadays, recruiting players begins at a young age, as highlighted at a recent under-8 signing evening, where youngsters hoping to be the potential stars of the future put pen to paper on their very first contracts. It's where our um, scouts would have recruited these young players probably about a year ago or so, and they've been uh, being coached in our development centre programme, and uh, eventually our academy coaches would have made a decision and an offer to uh, sign the players. And tonight is the first opportunity, really, for a young player to join an academy. You can't join an academy till the age of under nine. Um, so we have the parents in, we have the players in, um, we have staff and uh, people like Josh and Billy that have been here for 10 years themselves, that have come along, took the boys on a tour around the stadium, had photos with the boys. And while they've been doing that, I've been talking to the parents and kind of educating the parents and what's involved in joining an academy. There's a huge amount of effort that goes on, um, you know, across our catchment area. Um, you know, we have uh, we have 45 scouts that that um, we have split into different areas, uh, and they're out, as I say, every week, every Saturday, Sunday, uh, looking at school matches, Sunday football, district games. You know, any football that's going on at youth grassroots level, we'll have scouts covering. And uh, you know, these are the young boys. That it's getting more and more difficult to to recruit the young boys. It's. Uh, you know, these boys have been, you know, touted around by lots of different clubs and all the best clubs will want all the best players. You know, so tonight's really important for us to try and, you know, encourage the best players that we feel we've got here to sign for Chelsea Football Club. Before the signing session began, the young Blues were presented with a shirt with their surname on and taken on a tour of the stadium by a pair of inspirational recent graduates who can still remember their own first official evening as Chelsea players. Yeah, I remember it well to be fair. John Terry and Jodie Morris were here as well, so that's what I can remember. But it was a good night for everyone. Yeah, it was a very memorable night, obviously. Um, like Josh said, Jodie Morris and JT were there a bit like us now. Um, but you know, it was a good night and obviously 10 years later we're back here um, looking at the next generation. I was like one of the smallest, so there was a lot of bigger, bigger kids than me. So it was hard for me at the start to get in the team and stuff, but as it got on, I got bigger and stronger, so yeah. I think enjoyment is, is a big part, you know. Um, obviously they're still young, they're eight, nine-year-olds. Um, and I mean, I came to Chelsea and for me it was very enjoyable and, and I wanted to be at Chelsea every day, you know. Um, and I think the, the young boys have really got to enjoy it and obviously hopefully they can progress and just love their football, really. Once it began, the signing session was full of smiles as the players posed for pictures with Josh, Billy and their excited families. One happy dad, Ross Bowett, whose son Iban was one of the chosen few, was thoroughly impressed with the academy's setup. We're very happy, we're delighted um, and I think he's done the right choice. Um, the whole team is, uh, is so organised and uh, they're giving him also uh, all the TLC and all the ingredients for him to succeed and uh, hopefully uh, he will get there. Obviously uh, it's only uh, an early start but, uh, but uh, we believe he's got what it takes. Well I like to play at um, left midfield and maybe I would like to be like maybe B Bale um, and well, I, I like to um, pass players and then pass, and well, that's, that's what I like to do. And so begins what will hopefully be a successful career at Chelsea Football Club for these young boys. And maybe by 2020 or so, some of them might just be knocking on the first team door.
Who knows, maybe a superstar coming out of that batch. Ten years ago, before they were even born, Josh McEachern was an eight-year-old here at Chelsea, and look what's happened to him. Right, finally tonight, last but not least, it's the dance-off. Watched on by the first team and Carlo Ancelotti, the competition started with a warm-up from Billy McCulloch, the masseur, and Michael Essien to get the boys in the mood and see the standard they needed to reach to be in with a chance of winning. There were some good moves. There were some bad moves. And there were some gymnastics. The three finalists were Danny Papo, Thomas Callas and Nathaniel Chaloba, who had to dance together in the final part of the competition. After much deliberation from Billy and the first team, the 2011 dance-off champion was chosen. Nathaniel Chaloba took his win graciously, and to celebrate, there was more dancing. Well done, Nathaniel. That is it for this week's show. Jason. Coming up in next week's show, we got youth team highlights against Birmingham and the reserves against Blackpool. See you then. <laughs>